here to show you how to make this little fish charm out of a club soda can. Um, I cut the can open. Do I have a spare can? This is a, a club soda can. And I cut them open. I punch out these with this punch, these oval name, tag type of things. And I'm going to show you today how I made this using small... Um, rivets or whatever these are called at the moment they're of course I'm videoing and I left it lost me and I, I use my metallic lusters to color it um, I have uh, like a, some things to shape the fins and I have this little um, stylist I have uh, a little hammer um, where is my little hammer my little hammer my little thing to open up the um, rivet things on the back side like here on his eye. Um, I have this little thing to punch metal, but I also have a larger one that I can go different sizes. But I'm using this today, which is from, I did buy it at Michael's on sale. I actually used a coupon for it, just, I think it was at Michael's. Anyways, I bought it. It's a little hole punch for jewelry, and I'm kind of into starting to maybe do some of that. So, and I have this clamp scissors, so anything to clamp to hold them together to um, make some holes or to cut little fins out. I double them up and cut them up so then they're the same size. So that kind of stuff is what I'm using today. So what I'm going to do for this is, first of all, another thing too is that I put it on a foamy and then I open up the can so the can kind of curves this way with the outside and I use my um, uh, something to rub on it like um, the bone folder to rub on it to make it flat once I cut the can with the punch it's not sharp anymore so you don't have to worry about cutting you just careful when you're first cutting it with the little edges slivers but after that it's fine I actually probably have to worry more about the rivets a little bit until I hammer them really flat than I do about the uh, can itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a piece. So usually it's about three pieces that you need of this oval shape. I'm going to grab, make a head first of all, and cut with my scissors a bit of a head shape. Now this one kind of a little short of a body, but it looks almost salmon-y because I have that little lump on the back. You can also have like a, a, a pike, uh, I mean a walleye with the fin on top as well. Um, that's a pickerel. Um, it's different types of fishes. And so you can look up different types of fishes and see where the fins are and that kind of thing. Some of them have, if gold fishes have extra fishes towards the back tail, ones on the top, you can make it look like a really pretty orange goldfish with yellows and whatnot. So that'd be really cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide on where I want to clamp this. You can clamp this part here right now to hold it. Look in the back. I have lots of room to figure out where I want my hole and screw it. Make my hole. And you can use your regular um, crop of dial, whatever you guys have unclamp this and with my left hand yeah unclamp that and twist now this is a handy thing um, I haven't used it yet so this is my first time but I'm really seeing a lot of videos where it's very strong to go through washers and that's what I was really like impressed with so a little thicker metals than this can this thing will be really good for I'm thinking like you know t regular tin cans that you have your um, I suppose canned veggies in or whatever you can use that I'm just going to get that to pop off there we go so this is his head got the little hole to pop off now this is his head so now you got to figure out about the tail this one's cut from before no this is cut from that so I can use this part for the tail if I like could shape it, make it a little longer. I actually don't usually make it that, that pointy, but you can do whatever you want. 
So I'm going to show you there. So that's the tail. Now for the tail, I tend to cut the body a little bit more afterwards just to make the body skinny and thinner and line, streamline and kind of fit at the end of the tail. No fish has got such a fat body at the end where the tail is. Make sure you've got... Um, very thin like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing as the front and just make my, any, it would be faster probably with your crop dial or whatever you guys have. Now I'm hoping that I'm, going, I'm getting really testy on this one, getting closer to the edges. We'll see how that works for me. This one might be too close to the edge. We'll see. Just trying to make them longer. If you find your fish is too thin, you can make another joint in there. So you can make a really long fish, like a like a jackfish. That's a pike. They're very long, lean fish. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to. I'm going to be cutting a little mouth on mine. See, it's pretty close to the end, but... I'll show you. But when I do thin it out, I'm going to come in like this and thin out my body by kind of checking out how my tail's fitting there like that. So I'm going to come in and just like this, thin out my body a bit. Now, um, I'm also going to work on the fins. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a piece. This one I'm just going to fold over. So I'm going to clip them together. You can just put two pieces together, whatever you wish. And I'm just going to go and make a shape that I like. Now this is quite cute. A shape that I like. Clamp it to the body. Again, um, going to make my oh, I keep putting things to the side and I can't find them. And I'm going to clamp this to the make his hole. And I'm actually moving. I am actually moving it, but I'm going to actually pull it down a bit more. So I just have them both on the same size right now. There we go. No, I want it anymore. So you just kind of guesstimate where you want it. There, just a little bit more like that. And you can cut them bigger or smaller. Really not that hard, but I'm having a little bit more hard time. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Of course, I'm videoing. It's my video. Go figure. So I did. Oh, he's stuck on there. There we go. So this is my pieces. So these ones are pretty thin, but it'll still work. Now what I do is I take my letter punches and I'm going to show you the set I have and this one I bought at the, an auto store and um, I guess you know guys like putting their names in their tools or whatever it was really cheap it was like 10 bucks um, so I bought this and the letters so I mean the numbers that go with it so where did I put those I put them somewhere and um, so pretty cheap if you go to the princess auto or an auto store I find it cheaper than a craft store for some of these things that you can get. Now I'm going to make a little line here on the fish's face. I'm going to leave a bit of a face. So I'm going to make kind of like a backwards C. 
now I'm going to hammer out his uh, scales. So then he looks like a fish or a sheep. It looks like a fish. Just like that. And it's a little loud for the video, maybe, but give you guys an idea. Now, I would color it next after this before I attach everything together. I did color the other one after I attached everything, and I found it a little harder to get the color, of course, in the jointed areas. So this one, I'm going to go all the way to the edges. But some of them you won't have to go all the way to the edges because like this one here will be behind. So you know you can start like right up here where you think the joint will move and you'll see your scales. Just like that. I have the face, my head and my body done. I am going to now grab the fins. I have to grab a piece of foam. Just remember where I put it. My stylus and start doing my fin markings that I want. And I just go from the hole out and just randomly do it like that. And it looks pretty nice. I like the way it looks. You can go right over, over, over. And the more you do it, the nicer it looks, I think. So if you see how that is, it might be a little far up. I'm going to do the same thing with my fins. From where my pierce my hole out like a fan, I suppose. And do it that way. There you go. Fins. Now another thing I'm going to do is i got to find what do I want to do my uh, um, for him to breathe his gills. I could do a, a D. I'll try D, see if I like it. I used the C. I don't know if I told you I used the C for his, his scale. And I just put a couple of D marks in there. I don't know. You can even use um, your stylus for that as well. So it's all in what you like. Now I'm going to also, while I'm here, cut out his little mouth. Looks a little more fishy, which is really cute. And now I'm going to color him. So I'm going to color him with the lavish green. I'm going to put him on the paper because I don't need to hammer him anymore for at the moment till I get my put my pieces on together my joints or whatever so then I'm just going to color him it's such a small project I know I hope you guys can see pretty low about the camera being right in my face. That's one thing. When small projects, I have no worries that I'm going to cut myself with the can. So I have not, um, I don't go to pull towards myself on the edge. I pull away when I'm on the edge. So I don't know if you guys have any issues with that. I find it's pretty good so I never cut myself yet and now I'm going to do my fins my fingers are full of green I got the green finger but you can do any kind of color fish too so that's that side let's flip it over and do the opposite side It's pretty good with covering up, I think. These are the metallic lusters. By the way, I have not told you. This one's lavish green. It's really pretty. And the other one I'm going to be using is um, elegant emerald. And 
and I find it covers really nice. So then I'm just going to put some heat on it to set it onto my metal, and it stays. So it's good. Now I'm going to put a little bit of a hole right where my eye is, and add like a little rivet or there. Can't think of the name of it. It's still not the right name. And eyelet is an eyelet. Yes, eyelet. The fish's eye. So I'm gonna add an eyelet there, and then there'll be his eye, and that's where you can hang the charm. Or you can add another piece to the back, or whatever way you want the charm to balance. Now I'm gonna use my emerald, elegant emerald. This one's sticking to me. That one likes me. Flip them over. Really like this project. I think it's cute and it's recycling, so that's fun. Put more. I'm going to put more on the fins this time. Kind of. Make the fins a little darker green. It really picks up to the um, embossing parts, so it's really cool. Now, I am going to add one more space for the eye. Way over here. And this one's quite high up now. Going down, down, down. Right there. Now I can start putting this guy together. And I can trim wherever I want to trim. So what I'm going to do, it's a little harder to push it through because I think this is a little bit bigger, the, the eyelets are a tad bigger than the hole, I found, but it works. Here's my first one. I'm going to put my eye in there and I'm going to choose a blue one. I thought this was a really cute one, I really liked it. And um, maybe you could do clay fish and that kind of thing too. I just thought that this would be nice, um, a little something different too. So, isn't it cute? Very cute. I'm going to put my fish together. First of all, through this. Now that's where I think I went a little thin on this guy, right to the edge, but we'll see if it'll work. Might have to redo the fins. Be very careful. Not to tear this guy up. I went really close to the edge. I'm going to see if I can move it over just a bit. It slid a little bit. another hole so hopefully that will help not tear it. It won't show. It won't show through that I added a little hole and shaped a little oddly. And if you feel like something's a little loose or something, you can also add a tad of glue in between there. There's that guy, and I'm going to add another little glue on this guy just because. Just a little bigger. Make the hole a little wider. So it doesn't stretch the uh, thin edge.
do I have on there? Such a small hole, such a small piece, but there we go. See, that helped quite a bit. Now I'm going to put this tool here. We'll bend it open just the way I want it. Usually I use this piece here. That's where I got a little piece of my trim to do it so I don't wreck my table. And then I just flatten it out on this side. Just, there we go. Nice. So it's better when you do color it, I find, first. I'm going to put this end in. And it's, it's a simple, fun piece. There we go. Now his tail. And it, can you imagine, like, nice little goldfish? Different little colors, rainbow, something like that would look like a Siamese fighting fish. So cute. There we go. There's that guy. And his eye. I want to make his eye stay on. There's the reverse. Oops, there's the reverse side. Still very, oh, is that kind of see, you know, colorful. And we can snip it up so it looks a little bit better on this side. You don't have to have it like. There, it looks a little bit, you know, more fish like. And then there's that side. Now we just put a little loop uh, ring in his eye, and there we go. So that's how I made the uh, recycled pop can fish charm. And I hope you guys enjoyed that little video. And yeah, don't forget to craft like a duck. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Um, so far, this is what I have for my swap. And this is just a fun, um, easy way to recycle chain. You can have them hanging up outside. They'll last um, really good, if, you know, especially if they're under like the ease or whatever. Um, hang them up. In the home as a mobile cut thing so that's how my fish turned out <laughs> and I'm just gonna put some fibers at the end of it here on the big uh, piece here so just trying to put together some